Acts 27, starting at the 40th verse. And then we're going to continue on and pick up a few verses into that 28th chapter. Acts 27, 40 through 44, and then 28. Amen. I do honor God for my wife and family. Amen. Ah, uh, come on, come on. Hallelujah. I thank God for you that's here. If you can stand, uh, it's a little reading here, so I'm not going to ask you to read along. I'm going to read it in your hearing. And uh, we'll commence after the reading of the word. And it says, verse 40, And when they had taken up their anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore and falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped, that they escaped all safe to land. 28th picks up and says, and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called, it's called, it says Malaysia, but it's called Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, and uh, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened onto his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, Yet vengeance suffers not to live. And he, Paul, shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he had, when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after. They had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a God. I want to talk to you this morning, this afternoon, for a little while from this topic. And that is... It was all according to the plan. Lord God, we thank you for this word now. We ask you to let this word go forth, accomplish its purpose, for it shall not return again unto you void, and we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for it is so. 
In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in his presence. It was all, it was all, it was all according to his plan. Now, many of us have plans. Many of us have uh, ideas of what we feel should happen and the way things should go. But at the end of the day, the only plan that's really going to matter and that's really going to last is his plan. Talking about God's plan. And as I was teaching you a week or so ago about being successful, one of the main tenets of being successful is that you must have a plan. I taught you and we preached to you on the wise that no one succeeds by mistake. Nobody wins the, the Heisman Trophy in football. Nobody wins the Oscar Award. Nobody wins the Nobel Peace Prize by mistake. <laughs> no, no. If they win those awards or they have that level of recognition, you better believe that there was a plan, there was an intent behind what they did. There was an intention behind the level of success that they experienced in whatever uh, uh, occupation they were in, whether it was being an athlete, whether it was being an actor, a writer, a great orator, whatever it was, it took planning. It took sacrifice. It took time. It didn't just happen by chance. And so it is with a believer. As I was telling you that God even said in his word, uh, then uh, I believe it was Jeremiah, that he knows the plans that he has for us, for his people. And that is for us to prosper. That is for us to have success. Tell somebody, say, God planned for you to succeed. That's what God's plan is for your life. God's plan is not for you to live a life of degradation, of immorality, of failure. No, God said, if you're going to be my child, if you're going to be called by my name, I want you to recognize me. I want you to look like me in the eyes of the world. I want you to be successful. I want you to be a man, somebody that I can be proud of. Just as he was with his servant Job after the devil had gone to and fro throughout the earth. See, ain't nobody down there for real. <laughs> God said, oh Satan, have you considered my servant Job? At that time, the most prosperous man on the earth. And God said, I want you to tell me, have you considered him? How out of all his wealth and in spite of all the blessings, he still has remained true to me. And so I want to 
make an appeal to you this afternoon to understand and to recognize that it is God's plan for you to succeed. But it's also your responsibility to remain true and faithful to him. Oh, hallelujah. Things are not always as they seem. These past few years, all of us have been touched by this horrendous pandemic. We've, amen, experienced what it feels like to be shaken out of our comfort zone. I just want to give you a picture of what it is, even after being converted, even after being a believer, it's some time that you got to go through to get to where God has you. Well, God bless you, and we're so glad you have joined us here for another outpouring of God's Spirit on Ladder Rain. Well, listen, I'm so glad that you chose to be here with us. But I am here because I want to send a special God bless you and a special thanks out to all of our ministry partners. Yes, for those that have agreed to sow into this ministry to help us to carry the gospel all over the world. I want you to know that we appreciate you. But I also want to give an opportunity for those that would love to be a part. Yes, you still have chance. You still have time to be a part of what God is doing right here at Evangelical Faith Vision Ministries. So I want to give you that opportunity by telling you how to be a part by sowing in, by joining us and taking the gospel all over the world. Just go to our website at www.efvm.org and click on the give link. And listen, by you clicking on the give link, you can just uh, choose to sow into the ministry, or if you would like to, you can request one of our ministry materials, what God has given me for my messages and resource materials, or in our archive, we have uh, messages and sermons from our founder, Apostle Isaiah Revels, that you can request also. However you would like to do it, we just do not want you to miss this great, great opportunity because we want you to remember that this is still our year of divine destiny. Don't miss it. God bless you and we love you. Many of us have lost loved ones. Many of us have experienced personal illness and sickness. So I'm saying to you that God allows bad things sometimes to come our way for a purpose. And we have to recognize and we have to realize that just because we experience some rain, just because we experience some heartache, some pain. It does not mean that we're out of the will of God. Amen. But rather, it could be that God is putting us through a test to see, will you hold on? Will you stand the test? Will you be faithful in spite of? Will you be true to me in the midst of the storm? Ah, uh, I came to let you know that it was all, it was all according to his plan. Yeah, yeah, as a believer, it's important for us to know that in our lives, nothing just happens. Everything is ordered by God. So many times the enemy likes to try to play in our mind and get in our psyche to make us believe 
that what's going on is, is just single out in us. And all the while, God's saying, no, it's about me getting the glory out your life. But the sad part about it is, is that many times we miss that. We miss the fact that God wants the glory out of our lives. And just as it is with a diamond, many people don't realize that a real diamond starts out like a lump of coal. It looks all cruddy and looks all black. But it's over time and pressure and heat that halabasha, that that diamond begins to come refined and reformed. And when you see it again, it looks, after it has been on the refiner's wheel, it looks shiny and glossy and pretty. And it's one of the hardest materials that's known to man. But that's after it's gone through the press. After it's gone through the grind. After it's gone through the fire. Then you get to experience and see the true luster. of what it was intended to be. I want to talk to you a little bit about Apostle Paul, very interesting character here in the scripture. As we know that Apostle Paul's life did not start as the other 12. in that he was not chosen by the master. He didn't walk the road to Galilee. He didn't spend time at meat and supper with the master. And because of that, so many of the early saints and the early Christians, they had a problem with Paul because they uh, doubted, if you will, his authenticity. Oh, help me, Lord. I'm going somewhere. They doubted whether or not he was really Pastor Jerry, but what he said he was. Ah, uh, yeah, we know about Peter and, and James and John, and we know them boys, they was right there with him. When they stretched him wide and hung him high, they was right there. But where were you at? How is it that you feel like you have a right to try to come now? Paul teaching us and preaching us about something that we don't really fully believe that you qualify. And then on top of that, Minister David, he come with this newfangled word, talking about grace, preaching about the grace of Christ how his grace was sufficient and how his grace covered all sins and how the law kept you in bondage. The law kept you in remembrance of your sins, but grace, hey, taught you about who Christ was and showed you the purity and the truth of his love. How in the world, you, Paul, we remember you when your name was Saul. Uh, 
uh, yeah, we remember you when you were stoning Stephen. Well, we were stoning, but you wanted to hold the coats and let us do the work. We remember that. Now, here it is. You want somebody to trust your word? And so this is the climate in which Paul had to face members of the church. And so if I can trouble your patience for a little while, I just want to give you a picture of what it is. Even after being converted, even after being a believer, it's some time that you got to go through to get to where God has you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul's testimony began like this, and he said, and no marvel for Satan himself, because he was dealing with folk uh, that was fighting hard against him teaching grace. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't want to move away from what they had already established which was the law, because the law held people in bondage. And if you understood the religious elite of the time, they liked it being able to have the law on their side because that gave them the ability to manipulate, if you will, the people of God and to keep them constantly in remembrance. No, you did this, you did that, you did this. So now the only way you can really get to where you want to be at is you got to come to me and you know give me a certain offering and, and pay certain penitence but Paul said here that no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. My God. Talking about church folk now. If Satan can deceive you, then you can imagine that those that are akin to him can deceive you as well. Transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their work. 16. I say again, let no man think me a fool. I ain't, I ain't just talking to be talking. Watch this though. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little bit. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as if I were foolish. In this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take you, if a man exalt himself if a man smites you on the face. In other words, Paul was simply saying, let me play the fool. If that's what it takes to get this word to you. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and yes, we are rejoicing, and we're glad in it. Well, we're again glad that you have decided to join in here uh, on the Latter Rain uh, Ministries and we just, just believe that God had a pre-ordained reason for you to be a part of this special television broadcast. And I'm here because I want to give you the opportunity, if you do not know who Jesus is in the pardoning of your sins, there's no better time than the present. Well, it's all according to your faith. And I want to let you know that if you can believe you can receive. Jesus is here and he's ready 
to come into your life and to make you a part of the kingdom of God. Well, if you would, just repeat a few words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you, and I thank you for your sacrifice. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. Enter into my life, Lord. Live with me. Change me. Make me a better person, Lord God. Make me the person that you would have for me to be, and I would live for you the rest of my life. Now, Lord, fill me with the, your spirits. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And Lord God, I forever thank you. I forever praise you, and I forever give you the glory. Well, if you can believe that now, it's already done. It's according to your faith. It's done unto you. Well, I would give you uh, my advice, and that is that at this point, as a new believer, you need to join in and connect in with a church that is teaching how to become a, a, a full blood-bought believer of Jesus Christ. Well, I offer you to become a member here at First Albany Deliverance Cathedral right here in the Good Life City of Albany, Georgia, 1506 South Slappy Boulevard, Albany, Georgia, 31701. Well, and if you're not able to join in here, seek out and ask God, pray about becoming a member in your uh, local city because it's so important that after you have become a believer and, and believe God as your savior, that you get guidance, that you get direction because no one can just make it alone. It is our responsibility as pastors to help you to grow and to develop and to be the man or the woman that God has called you to be. Well, God bless you now. We love you. And we're looking forward to seeing you here. God bless you. Thank you for tuning into Latter Rain. We hope you have enjoyed the word this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please visit our online store at www.efvm.org or call 229-436-7707. To partner with us on our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please make a donation by clicking the Give link on our website or through the Givelify app. You've got questions, we've got answers. Join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for our life enrichment classes. Once again, we thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, the Ladder Rain.